Today is market day. Oh, they're unloading cattle until 8 p.m. tonight. I did get these animals out front to chew on some grass this morning. I let them eat the grass in the front this morning. I do have four animals that are, uh, you know, like this one right here, that one right there, that one right there. And then uh, the one on the end over there. Those are the four. Uh, the big ones are going to be the, that are, uh, the ones that are going uh, today. And so I let them out on the grass this morning. And... Uh, I let them have at the grass and I'm gonna give them as much food as they want for the for the rest of today. Uh, they're uh, unloading cattle until 8 p.m. And so I'll probably uh, start getting them going at about, uh, I'll probably uh, have them all loaded up and uh, I'll be out the door at about uh, probably around uh, 5.30. Cause I don't want them sitting at the sale barn all day and all night, just frying out in the sun, not eating anything. I don't want them doing that and so and I want to take them today because if I take them today uh, on the weekend, there's not a, there's not much traffic on the highway. And so I figured I'm going to get them uh, over to the cell barn today. And uh, today is uh, is market day. And I figured the, uh, well, the animals, uh, they're right about where they need to be. But okay. So, uh, you know, uh, I always say that, you know, this is one of the things that I always say. But you know the the greatest risk to any business uh, to any business is the owner is the owner of the business, right? I've said this repeatedly in the past. You know, uh, the greatest risk to a business is the owner of the business, right? I've said this repeatedly in the past, right? And you know, uh, and one of the worst things you can be in in terms of a mind state, if you are in, I fell out of a heaven. If you if you are in that mindset, mindset, I fell out of heaven a seven. If that is you, you are you know. Uh, you are doomed. I am telling you, I mean, it would be a mere, I mean, it, unless you turn on a dime, you know, because a lot of the times the reason that that, you know, uh, if you are in, I fell out of heaven a seven mode, if you are in that mode, you are probably going to be like that until you die. You probably are. I mean, uh, it's too ingrained into your life as of right now. If I mean, even if, you know, it starts, it, it can start very young. It can start very young, and, and once it begins, if you stay ingrained like that for too long, you are you are doomed. Uh, you know, and it would be a mirror if you turned on it. If you realized what was happening and you turned on a dime tomorrow, that would be a miracle. It would be a miracle most of the time. You know, I would say, you know, you know, if you are in, I fell out of heaven a seven mode. I mean, you are probably gonna be, you know, you are probably, you know, done for. Realistically, you are right. I mean, you know, um, you know, you you need to go out and and, uh, and and look at the world, right? You know, um, you know, uh, you need to go and look at the world for what it is, right? I mean, uh, the uh, you know, there's this uh, person that I watch on YouTube, and she says you need to go and touch some grass, right? You need to go and touch some grass. You need to go and take a look at the world for what it is. I mean, you know, uh, if you are in I fell out of heaven a seven mode, you are probably doomed. And if you start a business, your business and, you know, the greatest risk to a business is the owner of the business. And if you are in I fell out of heaven a seven mode and you start a business, you are going to get wrecked. You are going to lose everything. Either, either you are going to lose everything or you are, you know... Uh, you are legitimately barely going to make enough to get by. You are going to scrape across the bottom. You know, if you if you watch my video from yesterday, one of the, you know, I always, you know, the, the you know, the three uh, almost everybody will end up in one of these three categories. Almost everybody by default. If you take a look at the world around you, almost everybody's going to end up in one of these three categories. They don't have enough money, they're broke. They legitimately are broke. Number 2, they have no retirement. They don't know how they're going to retire. They, you know, they, they legitimately do not have any money set away for retirement. They don't know, you know, if, if they stopped working tomorrow, they would be screwed. And number three, they have so little money that it is actually causing problems in their family. One, you, you, almost everybody will end up in one of these three categories. And, you know, uh, almost everybody, almost everybody, it does not matter, or, you know, uh, you go and you find a woman who's divorced, right? And you ask her, oh, uh, well, you know, uh, you know, the, 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 you know, uh, whatever, right? Uh, you know, they, maybe, you know, they probably didn't have enough money and, and they were having all sorts of problems. I mean, it almost always you will end up in one of these three categories. And, you know, and I'm telling you almost every, and, and if you are in, I fell out of heaven, a seven mode, you are done for. If you look at, if you look at the world and you say, you know, uh, 
I don't need to go and find any answers. I was born with the answer, and the answer that I have is just correct. If that is you, I mean, you're, you're pretty much done for. I mean, you know, at that point, you, that has become so ingrained into who you are that you will legitimately just endlessly uh, sabotage yourself. Endlessly. Like, until the end of time. And, you know, me, the thing is, you know... Uh, I make, I make, you know, I make such a drastic amount of money in the cattle business. I make such a drastic amount of money in the cattle business that I can practically do whatever I want. You know, the cattle business, when it comes to the cattle business, I mean, your opinions are not going to get me paid. You know, uh, the cattle business is a 100% skill set, skill based, you know, skill based, uh, you know, if you, okay, so when it comes to farming, it doesn't matter what your opinion is. You, I mean, you could think that you were, you fell out of heaven to seven. You could think that you were, you, you could sit there and go, oh my God, I'm a phenomenal farmer. But if you can't farm, then you can't farm and you're not going to make any money. And, you know, uh, you know and you're going to sit there and, and, and just fiddle fart around in your little, in your little, uh, you know, in your little, in your little pile of BS until you die. Right. I mean, farming, it doesn't matter. I mean, legitimately, if you go into farming and you think you can farm, but you can't farm, you are in the worst possible, possible place that you could be because you're probably going to end up in one of the three things. Right. You're going to end up broke no retirement or you have so little money that it's actually causing problems in your family you are probably you know if you if you legitimately think you can farm but you can't farm and you go and you and you farm and you and and by default you will end up in one of those three categories and you know and you know and me i understand this you know i've been doing this for almost 15 years i've been at this for like 14 years i make a ballistic sum of money in the cattle business your your opinions of me aren't going to get me you know they're not going to get me paid i don't care you know the, the thing is is that you know if, if i was a politician and your opinions got me paid i would care more but i'm just going to be honest i'm you know you know if i run cattle i'm going to get paid for it and so you know i i, I essentially make so much money that it, that i can do whatever i want I'm just going to be honest when it comes to the cattle business i mean you're going to see what i mean you know uh, i make i probably make over a 50 percent return on each one of my animals i mean you know uh, it just is what it is i mean you know i make so much money in the cattle business every time i take a lot of animals to the market i come home with thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars i mean you know it just is what it is for me and so you know uh, let me go let me go turn off the water real fast and then um uh, you know uh, I'm not sitting here and not, but I'm not sitting here, you know, my, my goal of today is not to, not to throw my money in your face, but I'm just going to be honest when it comes to the cattle business, I probably, you know, I mean, I make so much money in the cattle business that it, that it, I mean, you know, it, it, I mean, people's opinions are regardless because when it comes to the cattle business, it is not a people's business. I mean, it is not a people business. It is essentially just straight manual labor. And I mean, you are going to get paid for your skill set. And if you suck, you're not going to get paid. And if you're extremely good, I mean, you're going to get paid a lot of money. That It just is what it is. Like, you know, I said, always say about me is that I could legitimately work 24 hours a day, 365 days a year until I'm 150 years old and people will still need cattle, right? I mean, I legitimately do not have the capacity to run enough cattle by myself to feed the entire country or the entire world. I do not have that capacity to do that by myself. I could legitimately run cattle... 24-7, 365 days a year until I'm 150 years old and I can get paid a boatload of money every minute of every day. I genuinely could, right? And, you know, if you listen to me talk, and this is what I mean by rich rubs off and you want to surround yourself with rich people, because if you surround yourself with poor people, you will become poor. It just is what it is, you know. Uh, people are very well aware of this idea, too. They are, but, I mean, you know, but by the time that it's already, you know, ingrained into their life, most of the time it is so it is so you know deeply ingrained into everything that they do that they cannot shake it they are legitimately stuck under their pile of bs and they can't get out of it i mean you know it just it, you know take a look around i mean you know go and touch some grass right go and take a look at the world for what it is i mean you know most you know i was i think it's like the you know in terms of like the 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 the, the census for the entire country you know, this includes areas like California and New York. Ninety, like ninety percent of people, ninety-three percent of people, or something like that, make somewhere between thirty and ninety thousand dollars a year. I mean, you know, if you if you took a if you took a mass a massive amount of people, if you took a you know, let's say a you know a, a, a million people, nine hundred thousand of them are going to end up making somewhere between thirty and ninety thousand dollars a year. 
And you know, um, on on a gross revenue, I bring home like a quarter million. On on a on a gross revenue, I bring home like a quarter million. And in terms of a net profit, I probably bring home something like a like a hundred and hundred twenty to one hundred forty thousand. You know, in terms of in terms of how much money do I actually come home with at the end of the year, I probably bring home about one hundred twenty, one hundred forty thousand a year. And even at this point, it is so much money that I can, I, you know, as long, as long as I continue to run cattle, as long as I continue to run cattle, I can do whatever I want. I can buy myself the $100,000 tractor. If I want to go and buy myself 50 more acres of land, I can go and buy myself 50 more acres of land. You know, I make like a three times what I spend on a monthly basis. Every month that goes by, I have like, you know, like, like seven, $8,000, I mean. Yeah, I mean, you know, and you know, and w when I make these videos and I say rich rubs off, I'm, you know, and, and I and I give you my ideas, you know, I'm I'm letting you know that these are my ideas, genuinely these are my ideas, not my ideas, but you know, these are the ideas that are going through my head and these ideas make me very successful, right? And I've always said, you know, if you start a business, uh, the thing about a business is that the greatest risk to a business is the owner of the business, right? The, the greatest risk to a business is the owner of the business, because if the owner of the business is a moron, your business is going to fail. And then you're going to and then you're going to be put into a miserable situation. And then, you know, and then most of the time, I mean, I mean, you will not be able to recover from that. By the time it's happened, you won't be able to recover. And, and this is not, you know, this is for, you know, almost everybody. If, if it happens to you, you it's, it's going to be the same for you as it is for, you know, practically everybody else. And the thing, you know, and but when you listen to my ideas, you know, and, you know, and you and you uh, hear how I go about things. You know that you know that's what I mean by rich rubs off, right? Rich rubs off, and and you want to be around rich people because if you put yourself around poor people, you will become poor. I mean that you can't help it; it will happen to you. And so you know, like when I look at my business right now, and I say, okay, uh, you know, I got everything going on. Uh, you know, everything that's going on is going on. And uh, my original business plan was to was to sell my heifers, was to take my heifers to market at 700 pounds and my original plan was to take my uh my steers to market at 800 pounds and i've been lowballing myself i've been lowballing my estimates you know making 1500 dollars an animal is very low at a, at a 750 pound average weight let's say i have half heifers and i have half steers right i have half heifers and you know and these answers like uh you know i've given the, i've given you all the answers already repeatedly right i've said every problem that you have in your life has already been experienced by somebody else more than likely Unless you are like in the like over 200 IQ range, right? Uh, you know, and but here's the thing is like even even then like uh, Like uh, let's say like you want to learn your let's say like uh, let's say you were going to be the first person Let's say we go back in time and you were going to be the first person to to build an airplane, right? Well, the problem has already been solved. I mean, where has it been solved? I mean, look at the birds, right? The birds already, the birds can fly. I mean, the, uh, and if you look at an airplane, it's practically just a bird, right? It's practically just a bird. I mean, all of the problems that you can solve, that, that you can probably possibly come up with have already been solved somewhere. Even if you want to learn how to make a black hole, right? Look at the universe, right? Somewhere, I mean, study the black holes that already ex exist in the universe. If you want to learn how to make a black hole, I mean, uh, just do that, right? I mean, look at the universe. If you want to learn how to make energy, look at the sun. I mean, you know, you know, solar panels are practically just leaves, right? Solar panels. Are, I mean, all of the, all of the, almost everything, anything that you can come up with, any problem that you can come up with, is, it's already been solved. One way or another, it's already been solved. It may not have been solved by people, but maybe it was solved by nature. I mean, it's already been solved. I mean, don't go around and go, oh my God, I'm coming up with brand new ideas all over the place. Turns out I fell out of heaven to seven. My life is a mystical, magical journey. And I'm about, you know, and, and, and I'm about to go straight into La La Land. You don't want to be in that situation. If you're in that situation, I mean, you're going to get wrecked. I mean, th there is no, I mean, the chances of you turning around from that once it's happened to you is almost 0%. You are likely going to get, get old and die that way. You probably are. I mean, all of the, anything that you are looking to, to you know, uh, anything that you are looking to, uh, any problem you might be having, it's already been solved. It's already been experienced by somebody or, or, you know, somewhere out in the world. It's already been experienced and it's already been solved. 
And if you watch me and you and you listen to how I run my business and why why it is that I make so much money in the cattle business and you know and I always tell you don't default moron if you if you do not have an answer use this answer because at least you know that this answer is like 93 or more percent correct right do not go back to oh my god you know uh, my life is a failure failure is the only thing that I could possibly be capable a lot of you are in this mindset anything any you know i call it the apple juiced mindset right default moron apple juiced mindset i mean uh, you know flailing in the ocean it's all the same thing right anytime anything difficult happens to you you flail in the ocean you you go default moron and you uh you know uh, i mean you you put you go into the apple juiced mindset right but but watch me as i you know but but if you watch me and, and watch me go through you know things like oh something bad happened and I, you know, and, uh, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go into, I don't go into the apple juice mindset, right? I, I say, take a good look at what's going on and just, and, and you know, and, and, uh, and, and figure it out. Like, oh, well, you know, I had, I had eight animals die, right? I had eight animals die. I was not anticipating that, uh, two of them died because, uh, you know, uh, well, I mean, uh, you know, eight animals died and, you know, uh, you know the the way I'm gonna go about things now is I'm gonna give my animals a metaphylaxis treatment of Draxin and I'm gonna use a a a a, 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 a nasal a, a nasal a, a nasal a, what is it what do they call it a, a nasal a vaccine I'm gonna use a, I'm gonna use a nasal spray vaccine and I'm gonna use a metaphylaxis treatment of Draxin right these are these are answers that somebody else figured out. I was reading a book on the internet and I figured it out, right? They, they had already figured this problem out. And so that's what I'm going to do. And originally my plan was to take my animals up to 800, my, my steers up to 800 and my heifers up to 750. That was my original plan. And, and, and I figured it, well, if I do half and half, that's 750, right? If I have half heifers and half steers and I take the average weight on them, that's 750, right? And if I make $2 a pound on, on that 750, I come home with 1500. That's very low. I am completely lowballing myself. The feeder cattle market is sitting at about 250, 260. Right? And I've already said this repeatedly. When you make plans, always lowball yourself. Always lowball yourself. Don't go, oh my God, you know, if everything works out perfectly, and oh my God, if my life turns into a la la land journey, I'm going to go straight into la la land, right? You know, don't make your plans like that. You know, if, if I if I have half heifers and half steers and the average weight of my herd is 750 because my heifers are 700 and my steers are 800 <coughs> and I make $1,500 an animal, that is $2 a pound. The feeder cattle market is sitting at 250, 260. <coughs> no, that is very low. I am lowballing the crap out of myself. When I, when I say I'm gonna make $60,000 a year, I am lowballing the crap out of myself, and I'm doing that because it, it is the most sensible thing to do. You don't want to be in a situation where you go, if my plan works out perfectly, and I go straight into La La Land, and I go on a mystical, magical adventure, then I will end up in La La Land. You don't want to be in that situation. If you end up in that situation, it's not going to work out for you. It's just not. And so when I take a look at my plan, and I take a look at the fine details of my plan, so what am I going to do, right? I had more animals die than I had anticipated. Well, so what am I going to do? I'm going to raise my, you know, okay. So today it's a very good, uh, you know, uh, okay. So when I look at my herd, right, when I look at my herd and I take a look at my animals, I can tell, I can tell which one of my animals are going to grow to be very large. I can tell, right? Like, let's say I take a look at these, uh, let's say I take a look, uh, you know, uh, like this one right here, you can tell this one, he's already uh, significantly taller than this one, right? This animal is probably going to grow to be pretty short. Let's just put two and two together. You can see how, how, how large this animal is, even though he is small. You know, even though he's small, he's, he's, he's pretty large. This animal, you know, uh, taking him to 900 is, gonna, is not going to be much of a difficulty at all. This animal, taking him to 900 is going to be a little bit more difficult. This animal is going to be a little bit more difficult than that, right? And, you know, and when I look at these Brahma cattle, you know, like if you go to the cell barn right now and you find a 100% Brahma animal, they are 100% full-blown Brahma, a heifer, 700 pounds. They're going to sell for like two to two ten to two and a quarter. You know, you know, even the full-on Brahmas, full-on Brahma animal, a heifer, 700, 7, 750, something like that. They're going to sell for like two, two ten to two and a quarter. 
you know go and take a look at the at, go and go to the cell barn and take a look at it for yourself i mean even a full-blown brahma animal and so when i have something like like a hereford brahma cross right i anticipate that it's a hereford brahma cross or a charlotte brahma cross and it's a steer that animal's a steer you know these cross breeds they get very large i mean it's you know the chances are they are going to get over 900 pounds pretty easily i mean if i just put them on grass for an extended period of time and they're probably going to finish somewhere around the 1600 to 1700 pound maybe even more they, they are going to finish at that about at about that range right and so so the animals with the larger frames i can keep them for an extended period of time and i can raise their weight you know i don't have to sell them at 800 if i want to i can even sell them at 950. And if I sell them at 950, I will make more money per animal than I would if I sold them at 800, right? And if I have unlimited grass, if I genuinely have unlimited grass, it doesn't matter. You know, they are going to be able to eat grass uh, no matter what. They will have an unlimited supply of grass. It doesn't matter what weight I take them to, right? And so, you know, if you're in a situation where you're like, oh, well, uh, you know, like, I mean, well, I'll tell you my situation. And, you know, and if you're in a similar situation, this is the answer. And, it, you know, if you don't have an answer or, you know, uh, at least you know that my answer is correct to a large degree, it is correct, right? If you're in a situation where you believe your margins per animal are going to drop pretty drastically and, you, you know, you need to increase your margin per animal, if you need to increase the amount of money you're making per animal and you take a look around and you say, you know, I have a boatload of grass, right? I have a boatload of grass. My animals, they could eat grass, as much grass as they want. Not only are they going to eat a boatload of grass, but they're also going to put on conditioning, right? They're going to eat so much grass that they get fat. And how do you know your animals are putting on conditioning? They need to put on at least two and three quarter pounds a day. If they put on more than two and three quarter pounds a day, they're going to put on weight so fast that it will out, that their weight will outgrow their frame and they will become they will become obese, right? And, and at the end of the day, you want your animals to be at a body conditioning score of about a six or a seven. By the time you take them to the cell barn, you want them to be at a, at, at a body conditioning score of about a six or a seven. That is where you want to be, right? Uh, you know, you want to, you know, you want to be at, at your target weight, but you also want to make sure that their body conditioning is correct. Because if you have some giant, you know, uh, like two year old, you know, uh, bull cat or bull or, or a heifer or whatever, if you have some giant two-year-old animal and the animal's just bone thin and the animal weighs 900 pounds, you're going to lose all your money. You're going to lose all your money and then you're going to go, oh my God, you know, you know, I got ripped off at the sale barn. But you didn't get ripped off at the sale barn. You played yourself. I mean, you were an idiot and, and, and you know, by the time you took your animal to the market and you got paid for them, you, that, that was the moment you realized, oh my God. I must be a moron and and now you have no money right and now you're in one of the three categories you default moron you apple juiced mindset you're broke you don't have a retirement and you know and you're and you know etc etc right everything you know you know everything that goes along with that right and so you know you know when i you know here I, pretty soon i'll be taking my animals to market uh, I, today is market day and so uh, today is market day and uh, you know when I take these animals to market the thing is okay and so but that's the big idea about my business plan is that as of right now I'm going to just increase the target weight for my animals I'm just going to increase the target weight because if I increase the target weight I'm going to reduce the you know today I'm starting to reduce the population of my field so I'm going to reduce the amount of animals on my field and my grass is coming in real good my grass is coming in real good. I have grass to put these animals on and I don't have any shortage of grass. You know, it's supposed to, you know, as of right now for about the next two or three months on average, you know, these are the best months for growing grass. You know, we can grow a, a warm season grass and warm season grasses accumulate biomass at a much more rapid rate than cool season grasses do. If you have a, if you have a warm season grass and a cool season grass and you're, and you're, and you're growing them both, the, the, the warm season grass on average, as long as, as long as the grass is under a, you know, somewhat optimal conditions for its growth, for its growth, you will, you will generate more biomass in the warm season grasses than you will the cool season grasses. You just will, I mean, uh, you know, uh, that's just how the genetics work out uh, for the different grasses. And so, uh, you know, I have practically unlimited grass. I'm going to increase the target weight for my animals. I'm going to take my uh, steers up to 900 and I'm going to take my heifers up to 800. Granted that they have the larger frame animals, I'm going to do this for the larger frame animals. If I realize that an animal is short, is smaller framed, if an animal is smaller framed, I will take the animal to market early and then I will, uh, I will, uh, I will bring home new, uh, a different animal. I will bring home a, a, a larger framed animal. 
And uh, you know, uh, within about the next two months, I'm gonna clear up all my credit lines. Uh, within about three months, I'm gonna clear up all my credit lines. Or I'm gonna clear up my credit lines to a degree that my credit score goes over 750 because if I go over 750, uh, you know, about any loan that I could possibly apply for, I will get. And so I'm gonna clear up my credit score up to the point where I'm over a 750 credit. And, and the moment I get over 750 credit, I'm gonna stop paying off my debt because my debt is not due until January of next year. And so I'm gonna stop paying off my debt. The moment my credit score hits 750, I'm gonna stop paying off my debt and I'm gonna open up new credit lines. I'm gonna open up new credit lines. I'm gonna purchase assets on my new credit lines. And then, uh, you know, uh, when it comes, okay, cause and, and then about, uh, about January of next year, when my credit lines that I currently have are due, I am going to use the assets that I purchased on my next set of credit lines to pay for my old set of credit lines. And I'm gonna keep the money that comes off the top, right? All the excess money that I have left over, I'm just going to go ahead and keep it. And I am I am changing my business plan up for this uh, for this farm. I'm not going to go balls to the wall on this farm anymore. It's just not worth it. You know, I'm not going to go balls to the wall. I, I've got a new field lined up. I've got a new field lined up, and uh, I'm going to utilize this farm. The entire purpose of this farm as of right now is to float my debt service. So I'm going to utilize this farm to float my debt service for my new farm and my tractor and possibly a new truck as well. I'm going to float my debt service for my new farm and you know uh, and and uh, and I'm going to float the debt service for my new farm until my new farm produces cash flow which won't take very long if you put me on a field I will start farming within 3 seconds if you put me on a field tomorrow if you put me on a 50 acre on a 50 acre field tomorrow I will have it planted within 48 hours I will have plowed the entire thing and, and planted it within 48 hours that's just how I am you know you know, a lot of times I, I either go or I don't. Those are my two settings, right? I either go 100% or I don't. Because if you start fiddle farting around and you go 98%, oh, you know, I want to work 40 hours a week and that's it. And I mean, you know, I mean, that, 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 that does, to me, it does not make sense. I'm, I'm, you know, that just, it, to me, it does not make sense. You know, it's either I go or I don't. And if I go, I better commit to it because if I don't commit to it, I have now became the, the biggest risk to my to my business. Right. Like if you if you have a half committed business owner, the business is going to fail because I mean, the, the business is going to fail because the owner is not committed. And this is also what I mean by, you know, you know, like uh, if you you know, the greatest risk to a business is the business owner you know, to the to the business is the business owner themselves, himself or herself. You know, if you have a business and, you know, the greatest risk is the owner. If the owners have committed, if the owners and I fell out of heaven a seven, you know, if you are in, you know, then, then the business is screwed. I mean, it's not going to work out. I mean, a majority of people either end up in one of those three categories. If you take a look around you, you, you I mean, you're going to start realizing all of this. And even if you don't end up in one of those three categories, you might end up still. I mean, but chances are you are going to end up in one of those three categories. I mean, it just is, you know, I mean, take a look around. I mean, I mean, touch some grass, right? Take a good look at the world for what it is. I mean, almost everybody's going to end up like that. And, you know, if you don't turn on a dime tomorrow, I mean, it's too late. You are, you know, I mean, but if you did turn on a dime to tomorrow, it would be a miracle. I mean, you know, I'm giving you the answers, you know, and, and if you are having difficulty remembering the answers, and when I say I'm giving you the answers and I've already given you the answers before repeatedly, then maybe it's a good time to pull out a piece of paper. If you want to get in the farming business, maybe it's time. Maybe it's a good time to pull out a piece of paper and write the answers down, write the question down and write the answer down. Right. What do I do if I, you know, if, if, if my if I want to increase the margin per animal. Right. What do I do if I want to increase the margin per animal? Well, you know, if you have a lot of grass and you want to increase the margin per animal, you and, and you realize that it's not going to cost you any more money to grow the grass, then you increase the overall weight of the animal. Write it down. Write the question down and write the answer down. You know, don't sit there and default more on, oh my God, everything's falling apart. I can't believe this is happening to me. Oh my God, what am I going to do? And you start flailing in the ocean, right? Apple juice mindset, default moron. If you, if you are having difficulties remembering the answers and the questions, then write them down. If you want to increase the margin per animal and you are in a situation where you have a tremendous, and you have a tremendous sum of feed, right? You have a, you have a large amount of animal feed, then it doesn't matter whether you raise 50 animals or you raise 70 animals. It doesn't matter if you raise them to 800 or 900 it doesn't matter because you have so much animal feed it's going to cost you the same anyway right i mean if you you know then what do you do to increase your margin per animal you take them to a higher weight 
what you know what what if the feeder cattle market drops you know and what if the feeder cattle market whatever right though oh my god what if the feeder cattle market doesn't go to the right okay here's the thing right if you go on the stock market and you look up the price of feeder cattle you have to understand that there are three directions that the market can, that the market can go it can go up it can go sideways and then it can go down so if you are talking about straight downwards, straight downwards, like you're, you're at, that the price of feeder cattle is just going straight down and it's not going up or sideways at all. It is just going straight down. The chance of that happening is one in three. So the chances of that happening by default, it's the chances of that happening are less likely than the market going up or sideways. And if the market goes up or sideways, it works out in your favor. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if the market goes up, it works out in your favor. If, if the market goes sideways and you, are, and you have somewhat of a business plan like me, it works out in your favor. It doesn't matter. If the market goes straight down, it doesn't really matter either because if you sell your animals for less, you will also purchase them for less. So if you, if you buy into the market, let's say you buy into the market once a month. Or, you know, like me, when I buy, when I buy a 50, you know, uh, as soon as I get that 50 acre field, you know, as soon as I get that 50 acre field, I'll probably be buying into the market like every two weeks. I'll be buying into the market every two weeks for the entirety of my entire freaking life. I've already said this repeatedly, right? Like if you are having difficulties remembering the answers and, and the questions and just write the question down and write the answer down. If I buy into the market every two weeks for the entirety of my existence, then it doesn't matter what the market does because if the market goes down, I will just I will sell my animals for less, but I will also buy them for less. If the market goes sideways, I make money. If the market goes up, I make money, right? I mean, that's just how. And if and if, and if I feel like my the margins per animal is starting to drop, and, oh, I need to make more margin per animal, and I got a boatload of grass on me. I have a I have a I have a boatload of grass. Then I'll just feed the animals to a higher weight, right? I mean, it doesn't matter, right? And, you know, if you are having difficulty, and, and, you know, because a lot of y'all, you know, you're going to sit there the moment, you know, if, if I don't answer this for you exactly, you are going to default more on, oh, my God, my, you know, oh, my God, everything's falling apart. I can't believe it. Life is unfair. Flailing in the ocean, default more on, oh, my God, I can't believe it. What if, you know, what if I just completely, you know, and then it's like, well, you shouldn't start a business. If you are thinking like that, you shouldn't start a business. If you take a look at a business and you go, you know, you know, um, at the end of the day, if I if I buy into the cattle market every single every you know every two weeks for the entirety of my existence, then it doesn't matter what the market does because I'm trickling into the market for the entirety of my life. If the market goes down, I'll purchase the animals. I'll sell my animals for a lower price, and I'll also purchase them for a lower price. If the market goes up, I make extra money. If the market goes sideways, I just make the money that I anticipate. I mean that it is what it is, right? I mean. I mean, and if, if you buy into the market every two weeks for the entirety of your life, it doesn't matter what happens to the market because you're going to buy into the market anyway, right? If, if you buy your animals for less, then you'll all, and if you sell them for less, you'll also buy them for less. I mean, you know, I mean, it, you know, there is nothing to flail in the ocean about. There is nothing to default more on about, you know, if you are having difficulties remembering the answers and the questions, write, pull out a piece of paper and write this on the very top. If I do not stop default moron, like if I do not stop acting like a moron, I'm screwed forever. And then write down the questions underneath it and write down the answers as well. You know, because I've already answered all of these questions like 15 times, more than 15 times. And I, and I make a boatload of money in the cattle business. It doesn't matter what you think. You know, when I go, when I go and take animals to the market, I'm going to come home with a multi, multi thousand dollar check. I mean, it doesn't matter. You know, this, you know, last week I made, I made six grand this month. I'll probably make about six grand, something or so. And, uh, you know, here in about two weeks, if I have to take more animals, if I believe that it is in my, you know, if I believe that I need cash, then I'll just go and take more animals to market. And over the period of three months, I'll have made about $45,000. You know, I mean, you know, well, what, 6, 12, 18, uh, over the period of, uh, let's say I take a, 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 a one, two, three, four, and a lot of animals to market. Yeah, I mean, I'll have made about $35,000, $40,000 over the next, uh, you know, three months. You know, if I take these animals to market and then, uh, you know, over the next three months, I'm going to clear up enough credit so that I have over a 750 credit score, open new credit lines, use the new credit lines to purchase assets. And then by about January of next year, when my current credit lines are due, I'm going to use my new assets. I'm going to I'm going to liquidate some of my new assets if necessary to pay for my old credit lines. And, uh, you know, and at that point, I can just uh, rinse and repeat into infinity and beyond. If you want to know how do I get money and 
how do I utilize a how do I utilize capital to run a to run a, a cattle business? Write this answer down. Write the question down. Write your question down. Right? Where do I get the money? Where do I get the money? You write it down, and then under it, you write the answer. You go to the bank, and you ask the banker. They will give you a credit line. You use the credit line. You figure out when your credit line is due, and if you feel, and you know, uh, and if you need a 750 credit score to get that credit line then and you utilize your entire credit line and you have assets that you have appreciated you currently have assets that you you appreciated to a degree that you you are making more money than you are putting into them then you liquidate your assets to pay for your credit line to the point where you can open up new credit lines you open up new credit lines you purchase more assets you appreciate those assets rinse and repeat into infinity and beyond the answer will never change Right, you go and, and then and, and that that's it. That legitimately write down where do I get the money from? You get the money from the bank. You ask the banker. They'll give you a credit line. They give you a credit line, you go and you purchase assets and you appreciate the value of the assets more than what it costs you to appreciate them. So if you put a thousand dollars into an animal and you make eighteen hundred dollars, then you have appreciated the value of that animal more than what it has costed you to uh, to appre to to do that. So that eight hundred dollars that is left over is the money that's going into your pocket. You get to keep it. That is how you create money. That that is how you collect money. And so you know, and if you go to the bank, and you and they tell you you need a seven fifty credit score. To open up new credit lines and you can open up new ones every six months and they're due every year right they're an annual credit line and you can open up a new one every six months you go and you purchase the assets you appreciate the value of the assets you reduce your credit to it you read oh excuse me you uh you uh ink you uh you reduce your debt until you have enough credit to open up new credit lines you open up the new credit lines you purchase new assets you appreciate the value of the assets and then when the credit lines are due you pay for, you pay them off that's it. That's the entire, that's the entire, that is where I get the money from. It, 100%, right? And, you know, and the extra, you know, sixty, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 a year that comes on top of that, you know, let's say you do that and you make about an extra $60,000 a year. That $60,000 a year is the money you get to keep. But that's it for me today, YouTube. Y'all have a good one.